In this example, we're looking to create a confidence interval for the average amount of money spent by full-time students on textbooks. We took a sample of 20 students and we got a sample mean of $249, which is the average amount spent on textbooks by those 20 students. And also we calculated the standard deviation of those 20 data values and got a standard deviation of $30. The question asks us to create a 95% confidence interval for the population mean, which would be the average amount of money spent on textbooks each semester by all Bunker Hill students. Similar to question number one, the base formula for a confidence interval is that the population mean is in between the sample mean plus or minus a margin of error. Now in this example, something that's different than example number one, is that we are using the standard deviation of the sample we took as opposed to the standard deviation of the population. This is much more realistic. In question number one, we were given the population standard deviation of the average price of the home sold in a neighborhood. It would be very unlikely that we would know the standard deviation for the entire population when we didn't even know what the mean of the population was. So because we're using a sample standard deviation in this case, we're going to be calculating or finding a t critical value. So the formula for the margin of error is similar, but instead of a z critical value, we will use a t critical value. And instead of sigma, the population standard deviation, we're going to use s, which is the sample standard deviation. We still need to know the sample mean, which is given to us, and they gave us the sample standard deviation, and they also gave us n, the sample size. We are told to construct the 95% confidence interval, so our confidence level would be 0.95. So the last remaining factor is that we need to find the t critical value. Now to find this, I need to use a different table. I need to use the student's t table. The student's t table is a little bit different than our normal table. The concept is the same in that we have this curve, the student's t curve, which looks a lot like a normal curve. And we like to know the area in between two particular t values, which we'll call our critical values. However, since the student's t distribution is not a standardized curve, we can't just have one chart that tells us the area in between or to the left or to the right of every single t value because the shape of the curve is going to change based on what are called the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom again are the sample size minus one. So because the curve changes shape, the area between two particular t values is going to be different for every shape of the curve. And in other words, for every different sample size we have, the area between two particular t values is going to change. So I can't create a chart that gives me the area to the left of every single t value for every single possible shape. So what we have instead is we have a chart that gives us given areas in the top few rows here, which we can then look up t values for. So this is the opposite of the normal table. The normal table, we looked up a z value and found an area. Here, we're going to look up an area to find the t value. So what we're going to use is we're going to use the third row of this table, the df slash c row. And this row right here has different confidence levels, ranging from 0 0.5, 0 0.75, 0 0.8. The leftmost column is a column for degrees of freedom. Going back to our question, we're looking for a confidence level of 0.95, but to look that up, we also need to know what the degrees of freedom are for our question. Since the degrees of freedom are n minus 1 and our sample size is 20, 
our degrees of freedom for this problem is going to be 19. So I'm going to take that information back to our table. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up in the left column the degrees of freedom 19. And I'm going to match that up with the confidence level in the third row of 0.95. Matching up this confidence level and scrolling down to degrees of freedom 19, I can find the T value that I'm looking for, which in this case would be 2.093. That's the T value that has an area of 0.95 between positive 2.093 and negative 2.093. But that's only the case for the curve that's shaped when I have a degrees of freedom of 19. You can see here if I go up and down this column as my degrees of freedom changes, in other words as my sample size changes, the shape of the curve is going to change and therefore the T values that have 95 percent of the area in between them is also going to change. One thing to note about the student's T distribution is that as your sample size increases, as the sample size gets larger and larger, the curve approaches looking like a normal curve. So if I get to the point where I have a large enough sample size, let's say I have a sample size of 1000 or degrees of freedom 1000, you can see here that the T critical value is 1.962. If you remember from question number one, when I had a 95% confidence level, I had a critical value of 1.96. So as this sample size increases, the shape of the student's t-distribution looks more and more like a normal curve. Getting back to our problem, we're going to take that value of t is 2.093, and that's the value we're going to plug into our formula. So the margin of error for our problem here after doing this calculation is going to be 14.04. And then to create my confidence interval, I take that margin of error and I subtract it and add it to the sample mean of $249, giving me a confidence interval seen here. I am 95% confident that the average amount of money spent on textbooks by the entire student body of Bunker Hill is between $234.96 and $263.04.